Hi everyone. Hi. Tell everybody hi. Hi. I have my buddies today again. I'm so sad that all of us can't be together, but at least we still get to have children's church. I got Bella and Jackson to help me out. And if you notice, we're doing a little bit of that uh, separation thing, the way everybody's telling us to not be real close to each other, but since Jackson and Bella live together, they can stay next to each other. So, but I sure do miss you all. And the reason I miss you all so much, I decided to go to your parents and your grandparents' Facebook pages and I went and got me some pictures. So that way I can see your all smiley faces whenever I want to. We got Ava and we got Austin and Braden and Connor and we got Bella, which Bella's here. We got Colton and Colby and Lacey and Jackson and Charlie and Jackson again, which we will say little Jackson. And then of course Ellie. And then of course we can't forget our helpers either. We got Braden and Kennedy. And we just miss you all. I, I miss you all terribly. It's just breaking my heart that I don't get to see you all. But we all need to be safe. And we need to do what uh, they're telling us to do. So today I decided that we would end up doing, since today is Sunday the 22nd. As a matter of fact, it wasn't the 14th. It was the 15th last Sunday. <laughs> we were all wrong. So... We are get, we're getting ready to do our song, and it's an easy peasy one. Everybody knows it, so I expect everybody to be able to sing this song. So let's try to get to it and get it going. And of course, you know it always takes its time. And what the, I see it's thinking. It's a thinking. Come on. Well, what's going on here? Why is it not playing? What's that? I don't know what's going on, guys. It was playing last night. It might be frozen. It might be. Oh, I saw those. It's thinking. It's thinking. I see the little circle going around and around and around. Yeah. Just love modern technology. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackson is repeating everything I say. You know, while we're waiting for this to come up, I would like to tell you all to maybe get your parents to do a little video of you all on your cameras, on, your, on their phones, and send them to me. Because I would love to see what y'all are doing since you're all home now. And this, for some reason, is not deciding to come up. But we all know it. So let's just all sing it together. It's the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. It's the B-I-B-L-E. See, easy peasy. It's so easy, let's do it one more time. Jackson, why don't you hold that Bible up for somebody? Hold it up. That's what we're that's what we're doing. Let's do it one more time. It's the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. It's the B-I-B-L-E. Good job, guys. And watch it. It'll end up coming up. Why is it doing it? Here we go, like two. I don't know what happened. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, now it's deciding to come up. We'll let this song go ahead and play once it comes up because it, it plays uh, other verses that we haven't learned yet. So we'll just let that come on up. It's not like we uh, have a whole lot to do. <laughs> So, always remember to have your parents send me a, a message or a, a comment to make sure that you have 
uh, watch this video and everything because of, uh, get, no, it's not going to, something's wrong. Oh well. So, maybe the internet's a little slow out here today, I don't know. But, uh, make sure that they leave a comment who has watched the children's church and who had their Bibles because I am still keeping attendance, okay? So, now it's time for what, Bella? What? Prayer. Can you say prayer, Jackson? Prayer. Huh. Good job. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask Bella to stand up and read our uh, prayer for today. And all of you all stand up too, and you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put your hands together. Remember? Come over here and stand in front of Bella, Jackson. Stand in front of here. Come over here. I'll fix it. It's okay. Come over here, Jackson. Because we're going to say prayer. Put our hands together. Put them like this. Can you do that? Good job. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here, Bella's going to read it, and she's going to try to be a little bit louder than she was last week. So, here we go. Yep. Go ahead, Bella. Dear God, Father God, we are amazed by what we are learning about your sovereignty. Yeah, that is hard. Thank you for being in control of all things, good and bad. As we continue learning about your, your amazing love, you have us. We pray to you today to please help us in, in, in the world as we go through these trying times with the coronavirus. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for your presence in our life. In Jesus', Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job. And remember what I said last week. Uh, if you all have a little, also make sure you have your Bibles and parents make sure you have their snacks ready too. I forgot to say that one when we first started. And if you notice this one is a little bit darker, I noticed we kept the lights off down the middle here because it was glaring onto the TV. So you can still see us. We're still here. So. On to the next thing is offering. And Bella's going to be collecting that up. And remember, if you have offering at home, just put it in that envelope. I told you all to try to get together. And when we're able to get back together, you just bring your envelope in and we'll put it all together and to date it. Okay? And Bella, how much we got today? Three dollars. We collected three dollars today. So we're going to... Get our little envelope out, and I'm going to change my 14 over here to 15, and now I found my pencil I thought I was looking for. It's in here. <laughs> so, 3, 20, 2, 20, and so far we have $3. All right. Good job. Okay. And Bella, if you'll hand me the little bucket, I'll get it put in here for us. And you're all getting all your stuff together and getting it in your little envelopes. Get it all down in there. Change is always easy to do. We just do it like this. There we go. We got it. And put it back in this. And we'll put it back here. So, now it's time to go on to what? Come on, Ava. We know you know this. Element of the month. Can any of you remember the word? It was in our prayer. Solventry. Good job, Bella. I hope some of you all out there remembered what it was, too. So it is. It's solventry. 
And the definition for that is God is in authority over everything. Yeah. And next, it's time for the VOM, which is verse of the month. Good job, Bella. And we're also going to have our cameraman, Brother John, read our verse of the month for us. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Psalm chapter 103, verse 19, King, King James, James Version. Version. <laughs> we all say that all together. And now, no. it's time for something. Yeah. It's, nope. Here we go. Are we ready? Ready? Are you guys ready? Ready? You guys ready? Here we go. All right. And the big idea. God is sovereign and the glory belongs to him. And if you remember, even in our prayer, we had we were giving him all the glory, didn't we? Didn't that was in our prayer also. Even with the word sovereignty that Bella read for us. So we know that all the glory that we have, we give it all to God. Because He is the one and only true God. And I have a little bit of a surprise for you all today. You're not going to believe this, but I've been in contact with Pastor Steve. What do you think about that? We've been messaging each other on the phone. And I'm going to read it to y'all in a minute. Jeez. I got some exciting news about Pastor Steve. It's so awesome. Okay, but now it's what? You know what it is. Snack time! Woo! Everybody get your snacks together. Yep, get your snacks. Good job. Yep. Okay, well, everybody's getting their snacks together. Also, before we leave today, we're going to talk about the crosses and stuff that we're going to do for Easter. Since we're not sure of what's going to happen about us being able not to come to church the way we want to, where there, there's only supposed to be ten or less together, we might have to do our crosses a little different way, and I'll talk to you all about that in a little bit. But one thing Pastor Steve wanted to tell you all is the next thing that comes up right here. Pastor Steve says to protect yourselves from the coronavirus and that he's praying for each and every one of you. He literally said... You make sure you tell them that I'm praying for each one of them. Isn't that awesome that we have a good friend like that, Bella, that's out there praying for us? And he really doesn't know us personally, but he's praying for us. But that's the way everybody should do. So, what do you think about our little ugly guy there, our little coronavirus? He's a little ugly man, isn't he? And so to help with reducing the risk of the coronavirus infection, we also we need to make sure that we're washing our hands. Make sure that you're also using uh, the sanitizer if you can't wash your hands. And I know some people wash their hands and use sanitizer, which makes no sense. But it's still because soap, from what I'm understanding, soap and water is the best thing for making sure that your hands are really clean for this virus. And you know, maybe you've gone to the grocery store or something or other with, with your parents or something and you see people out there wearing plastic gloves and masks and it's just people trying to make sure they're protecting themselves. And sometimes you just have to do that, especially us older people. Me. So, 
And also it says if you uh, cover your nose and mouth when you're coughing, sneezing into a chip tissue, or make sure you do it in your elbow. But always remember, if you sneeze into a tissue, you make sure you throw it away. Don't leave it laying around, because somebody might pick it up, and then they'll get your cold. So, avoid contact with anybody with cold or flu-like symptoms. But they're also trying to tell us that we need to try to stay about six feet apart from each other. Since I've already been around Bella and uh, Jackson all this week, basically, uh, we don't really need to be that separated. But I did put a little separation between us. I'd say we're about three feet or maybe four feet away from each other. And we're making sure we're not touching each other. So that's a good thing. So now let's see what Pastor Steve's doing for his protection. Oh my goodness! Look at Pastor Steve! I think he's going to try to sword fight the virus, don't you? Oh my goodness! He's covering himself all the way up, isn't he? <laughs> he's ready to do battle with the coronavirus. I don't either. I don't think he does either. He's just being silly. But I just love Pastor Steve. And I want to tell you all something. Before we go to his video, he and I have been messaging, sending messages to each other, concerned about each other's health and stuff like that. And uh, I told him about how much you all really love him and love watching him. And I also told him, Austin, that you call him Uncle Pastor Steve and some of the other kids do too now. And he really liked that. He said, I, this is what he said back to, he was telling me how sweet it was. I was telling him how much you all really like him. He said, I love that my goofy and zany videos connect with the kids. I'm honored that the kids are calling me Uncle Pastor Steve. Isn't that cool? He likes that. He said he's trying to put a video together maybe about the coronavirus. He's not sure if he's going to be able to get it out to us or not. But hopefully he'll get to use it some other time. And then this is what he said at the end. I'd love to come and see your group sometimes. What would you all think if Pastor Steve came here and saw us? Isn't that awesome? That would be so cool. So, I sent him a message back and I said, Oh my goodness, that would just thrill my kids to pieces if you came up for a visit. I told them we're a small group, about 15 of us. And I said, but they would be just over the moon if you came. And... Uh, he came back and I almost also asked him in my message, asked him how him, him and his family was doing and everything. And he said they were doing good and he said, then he said, where exactly are you all located? And I told him we were in Lexington. And he said, it is not a, and he also said, tell, this is when he said to tell them that he's praying for everybody. He is not surprised by what is going on in the world right now. But this is God's plan, and it will be accomplished no matter what. And so, I, uh, I told him that we lived in Lexington, and after the coronavirus, hopefully, all when all this has gone away, we can get Pastor Steve up here to see you all. I think that would just be so awesome. So that's something for us to look forward to, isn't it? So now it's time to see what Pastor Steve has to say about today's lesson. And I hope it'll come up because of this. There we go. Hey kids, welcome to the Big Idea video today. I'm your host, Pastor Steve, and I am so glad you're with us today to learn this lesson about sovereignty. Ooh, that's a big word, right? But it basically means we 
had a God that is in control or authority over everything. And boy, isn't that great that we don't have to try to control everything? God is in control. He is the one that's sovereign. So as we're walking together on this element this month, I thought it would be pretty cool if we walked together through the museum and checked out some amazing art. Right? Are you ready? Okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah, you know, museums are really, really great. And there are museums all over the place. This particular museum is an art museum. And I'm going to check out some cool paintings together with you. All right? Oh, I see we've made it to the first one. Yeah. Now, some of you probably recognize this painting. This is a young woman who is sitting very carefully with an <laughs> odd look on her face. It makes me wonder, did she just sneak a piece of candy when her mom told her she couldn't have it? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this painting is known as the Mona Lisa. It was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. You may have heard of him because he was a famous inventor. But, you know, what if I told you that I actually painted the Mona Lisa? Huh? What would you think about that? What? You don't think I'm very artistic, huh? <laughs> well, actually, you're right. I'm not very artistic, and my Mona Lisa would pretty much look like a stick figure with some hair. I don't have any hair, but the Mona Lisa does, so that's easy to add, right? <laughs> well, you're exactly right. I didn't paint this. Leonardo da Vinci is the one who deserves the credit and recognition for this amazing work of art, which is probably the most famous painting in the world today. Awesome. Oh, okay, great. Here we oh are. Oh my goodness, what's Ooh, this? Look at this. This one is really cool. I've seen it mm, But it kind of looks like I mean, let's just be honest. It kind of looks like someone just dumped the colors out accidentally. And then they came back with the brush and they tried to fix it up. No, that's not really fair, is it? No, this painting is another world-famous work of art. It's The Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. This is a very valuable painting. And it's been reproduced into posters for years and years and years. But what if I told you that I actually painted this masterpiece of the Starry Nights. <laughs> no way! You would never believe that, would you? And you know what? I wouldn't try to trick you and make you believe that. You know why? Because Vincent Van Gogh painted this painting, and he is the one that deserves the, the honor and the recognition for creating this work of art. Okay, we got one more. Are you ready? Everybody say, one more! One yeah, more! Let's go! Oh, here we are. Okay. Oh my goodness. Now, this painting reminds me of my grandparents. This is exactly what I remember them looking like standing out in front of their house whenever we would arrive from our family road trip to come for a visit. I was always a little worried about what was going to happen with that pitchfork, but thankfully my grandpa was a really, really cool man and he never tried to poke me with it. <laughs> well, you know kids, this painting is known as American Gothic and it was painted by Grant Wood. And it depicts America, life in America at the turn of a century. And it is a famous painting. What if I tried to tell you that this is actually my grandparents and that I took the picture of them and then somehow painted their pictures onto this canvas? No, <laughs> no I so. you're right, you wouldn't <laughs> believe it. And I no, wouldn't even no. try to tell you that because I'm nowhere near that artistic and plus it would be a lie for me to act like I did do it. It would also take away the honor and the glory that true artist deserves for making this painting. Well, you know kids, all of these paintings that we've seen in the museum today are really good reminders that we should never try to claim the glory for the work that someone else has done. Those painters, those artists did an amazing job with their paintings. And it would be wrong for us to try to take the glory from them. But you know what? There is someone who deserves even more glory for the person who painted the Mona Lisa, the Starry Night, and American Gothic. And I think you know who I'm talking about. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about our Heavenly Father, the Lord Almighty. He 
deserves the ultimate praise and the ultimate amount of glory because he was the one that created those artists and he gave them yep. those talents to be able to make those paintings in the way that they have done so. God deserves the ultimate glory because he's the one that created them. He is the one that gave them the talent and the ability to create those paintings. So as we're making sure to give the proper recognition to three famous paintings, let's not forget to ultimately give God the glory because, hey, he deserves it. And that actually is what our big idea is today. God is sovereign and the glory belongs to him. Kids, when we start thinking about all the things that famous people have been able to accomplish, we need to recognize that God is the one who made that thing possible. And you know what? As you begin to learn different things and expand on the talents that you have, you need to remember to always give God the glory for those talents and abilities. He didn't give them to you to bring glory to yourself. He gave them to you so that you could bring glory to Him. And what a great opportunity that is for us to be a good witness to the people around us in this world. Well, I am so excited to dig into the Bible today and learn about this big idea. So let's get those Bibles out and let's get started. Bye, Pastor Steve. Did you tell him bye? Say bye, Pastor Steve. Good job. So, everybody get your Bibles out. Go to your table of contents. You know where to go to so you can start looking these up. And we're first going to go to Psalms. That's where we're going to go to first. And I'll go ahead and read it since I can't listen to you all read it. I would let Bella read it, but everybody knows how soft-spoken she is. You all might not hear her. So, but that's okay. That's just the way Bella is. That's the way God made Bella. It's the way God made me, to be all loud and all boisterous, you know. One thing I can say about Bella, you know how she always a little bit standoffish and won't hug you? Well, she's been pretty smart about that, because now we're not supposed to touch people, are we? <laughs> so she's done really good. <laughs> she, she reminds me of Howie Mandel, don't touch anything. That's, your parents will know about that, so... Okay, so let's look over for, to Psalms. Remember, go to the front of the Bible first. You can probably go ahead and find it if you want to, Bella. You can just read along with me. Go to Psalms. And you know that's, and it's spelled with a P, even though the P is silent. And do you know what Psalms really means? Psalms means songs. Did you all know that? So... Bella, if it was right after, yeah, you find it? Right, but I'm close. Yeah, yeah. close. Okay. And we're going to go to 95, yeah? Good job, Bella. I say good job a lot, don't I? So. <laughs> First, I want to take you all to while you're still looking that up. It says, God's plans for us are wonderful, and the blessings He wants to give us are too many to even number. God deserves all the glory and the praise for everything that He gives us because He's everything. He has everything under control and looks out for our best at the same time, looks out for our best interest at the same time. In fact, with the big idea today, would also it said, you know, it's God is sovereign and all the glory belongs to Him. So that's sort of what that was what I was talking about there. So now, as I hope everybody's found where they need to be, Psalms 95, and did you find? And we're going to do verse one through six. So we start right where that, sit, that big O is. Yeah, you got it. Okay, it says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. 
Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. You see where I just said, told you what psalms meant? It means songs. So what he's saying right there, unto him with psalms, meaning songs. Reading Jackson. Thank you. Um, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and and no, I lost my place. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Lord and Maker. So, what is this saying? God created everything. God created everything with his own hands. So you can just imagine how big and mighty he is. He is such an awesome God. That he even created us. You know, he didn't have to do that, and he did. And he loves us. And it's uh, so now the next verse that we're going to be doing is John, and that's in the New Testament. Remember, you have the four Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we know. On Wednesday evening, I found these verses in the Bible as we were doing a study. And I just thought it was nice that it sort of went with what's going on in the world today, you know, with everybody not being able to go to school and people not being able to go to work and everything. I just thought this was just very nice, very nice what uh, Jesus was saying because now this is Jesus talking and remember Jesus' words are in what? Red letters. Good job. Ah, yeah. Red letters. You all should have known that one for sure. So we're doing 23 and 24. Did you find it, Bella? Um, not yet. Did you find verse? It's verse 4. I mean, chapter 4. I'm okay. Maybe. Chapter 4. There you go. And we're going all the way down to 23 and 24. Okay. Got it? Okay. So here we go. We're going to go with 23. Maybe. But the hour cometh is, I mean, I'm going to start all over. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in the Spirit and in the truth. And the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a Spirit, and they that worship Him, and they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. So, you see, I know, maybe you all don't see it, but I know like your parents and your grandparents all over social media, everybody is talking about that. Everybody needs to be praying to God now, right? With all this that's going on with the coronavirus and everything, everybody's seeking God now. And that's a good thing because we definitely need to pray to God about what's going on in this world. Aren't these some awesome verses? I really love these. 